So, uh, Nima Vidati is in Gitmo again. Or is it the FEMA camp? I forget. Which one gives him the work release program? Uh, anyway, it's a FEMA, um, camp. <clears throat> it's a FEMA camp. Okay, he's in the FEMA camp. Um, so, Garrett Fox is our guest. How are you doing today, Garrett? Excellent, excellent. Glad to be here. Oh, wait, you're our co host, not our guest. I, I can never remember these things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, What's up, man? Things. What's up? Turn up a little bit if you can. I don't know if you can. I don't think there's anywhere in Mumble to do that. But uh, if you got a preamp or something going there, turn up a little bit. Get sexier. Okay. All right. Well, I'm adjusting some knobs here. I'm up in the mic now. Get up in my grill. You were yeah. out. Uh, You're out during the news. You were out uh, burning one. I don't know what that means. I don't know what you kids burn, but uh, hopefully it's safe. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So there was um gunfire in my neighborhood last night. That never sounds good. Yeah, it was. Well, here's the thing. A week ago, Sunday night, I was up at about 3.30 in the morning, and I heard like, pop, 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 boom, pop, pop, from about two or three blocks away. Next day, I look in the police blotter on the on the newspaper website on the Prairie Pravda, and it said at that time, uh, shots fired, and it was listed in an address that was down like four blocks away, three blocks away at the where the poor people live. You know, hey, they got right. some. Uh, the other side of the tracks. No, actually, we're both on the good side of the tracks. The the, the other side of the tracks is felony flats. You don't want to go there. But uh, yeah, this is just poor people. Um, and I thought it was gunshot. And I was like, damn, that's horrible. And told my wife about it. She slept through it. And then last night we were both up because we watched the meteor shower. Did you watch the meteor shower? No, I didn't even know about it. Well, you need to get the Alexa toolbar, which I recommend to everyone because that's where I get all my interesting things that pop up. Get the Alexa toolbar and install it. It helps everyone. Helps you. Helps me. Helps the fiends. And uh, yeah, we went out from like 1230 till 130 and sat in the front yard in, in lawn chairs in the dark and watched. I mean, we saw like 30 shooting stars. It was amazing. That's awesome. I wish I would have known about that. Well, you need the Alexa toolbar. So... um we came in and we were sitting on computers uh we we're both reading we we're both reading the book unintended consequences on pdf on our computer screens at the same time have you ever read that book garrett fox negative you gotta read that book it's uh it's kind of like mulan labe but um you know mulan labe is a good book but unintended consequences i think is a better book i would say and it was written about 10 years earlier it's amazing it's amazing who wrote it? What, uh, what's it about? John Ross. It's about the unintended consequences of gun control. And uh, it's kind of historical fiction. It's got a lot of actual events in it from like turn of the century till now, 1900s till now, involving gun control. And uh, But it's got really strong characters, really good writing. And uh, I'm only about halfway through it. It's like a 700-page book. And... Uh, yeah, I, I think it leads to, like, American Revolution 2 or something, but I haven't got there yet. I know that Timothy McVeigh was reading it while awaiting trial for the Oklahoma City bombing, which is, you know, a criticism people have of it. But the, the author kind of debunked that really well. He said, you know, authors have no control over what who their fans are. And also, uh, you know, if you want to judge people by the books they read, when they found the Unabomber, he only had one book in his shelf, and it was a book about global warming by Al Gore. <laughs> is that true? <laughs> that is true. It's absolutely true. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, unintended consequence. So we're reading it in about uh, about the same time, like 3.30, quarter four. We hear pop, pop, pop. We had windows open. We're like, it's hot. You know, we heard like pop, 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 boom. No, we didn't hear a boom that time. We just heard pop. And I was like, that sounds like, you know, nine millimeter gun play pretty close. And uh, then about 15 minutes later, it happened again. And about 15 minutes later, it happened again. And about 15 minutes later, it happened again. So for like an hour, every about 15, 20 minutes, somebody sounded like was firing a bunch of gunshots. But the last time it happened, I was in the bathroom, standing there ready to pee with the window open. Window doesn't face the street. I'm not going to stand in. You know, I'm from LA. I know that when you hear <laughs> gunshot, you don't run to the window and pop your head up. Um, right. So, but I was in there and I heard it and it was like, I could hear it a lot better, and I heard kind of a retort after it that didn't sound like it sounded like fireworks, not gun gunplay. 
Uh, so it was just people being idiots. And I talked to this dude this morning that like I ran into him. I went out on my bike looking for firework scraps in the street to like confirm it because it would make me feel better if I found them. Right. And ran into this dude walking his dog that like knows everything about the neighborhood, knows everybody. And he's like, yeah, I heard it too. I had my 45 out. And, uh, <laughs> and he's like, he, he said he thinks he knows who it is and where they live. And he's pretty sure it's fireworks and it's happened before. And he's like, yeah, they used to do that a lot, but I hadn't heard from them in a long time. I thought they were, you know, I thought they'd moved away or something. I was like, well, maybe they were in jail and they got out. And he's like, that would make sense with those guys. Well, maybe somebody was being attacked by a wild jackalope or something. Every 15 minutes, because that's how they work, you know. Right, they travel in packs. And and they take turns every 15 minutes, yeah. In waves, they come in waves. <laughs> they come in waves. They eat one of your babies, and then, like, <laughs> takes about 15 minutes, then they eat another one, shoot a bunch of guns off, Yeah. No, but uh, I'm calmer about it now. I'm pretty sure it's fireworks. Yeah. Uh, as long as you're hearing gunfire off in the distance, it's better than in your backyard. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. So, so. Yeah, yeah, I never hear gunfire anymore. Yeah, because cause you can't get guns where you live, so there there aren't any, right? Oh, no, it's not that bad. We just can't carry them with us everywhere. Yeah. But back when I was living over at my folks' house, we had hunters come over all the time, and it was it was kind of nice to hear them fire something off because I was like, "Ooh, cool! We got some deer jerky coming." <laughs> Would they bring you deer jerky? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm uh, I'm supposed to give a shout out to Joseph Alviro uh, and his blog JoeyTheWrench.tumblr.com. He did some help with the fiends today. Joey yeah. the Wrench, huh? Yeah, sounds like a gangster. Small town Sounds thug. like a Mr. Fix-It site. <laughs> Joey the Ranch. Yeah. By an so, ex-mobster. So are you going to the milk event? Oh, yeah, definitely. When, when is that, and what's it about? Uh, let's see. That's August 18th, which is a week from yesterday, uh, down at right next to the the reflecting pool in D.C. We've got yeah. a, a, whole, a whole bunch of people coming from all over the creation. I... I I forget the name. It was Rob something, Robert Hernandez, I think maybe, who is organizing, doing a lot of the organizing, and then another lady by the name of Liz, and they are advocates of uh, raw milk sales and consumption without the government getting involved in it. So this year, I guess they're merging some of the Lemonade Freedom Day guys and the uh, raw milk riders, I believe is what they're called. And they're all getting together down there to freely trade lemonade milks. I, I know a lot of people are bringing some fruit and veggies from their home gardens. And there's going to be people making sandwiches and having a picnic and all without asking for permission. I, I have a recommendation for anyone going as someone who used to consume raw milk at my grandma's farm all the time when I was a kid. And yeah. uh, he liked lemonade too. Don't drink both in the same afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, they'll sour in your stomach and you'll get sick. And then the, the FDA and the Center for D Disease Control will go up and say, he's sick, see? Right. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. I intend to get, you know, try and get a gallon of it or something to bring home. I'm just worried about how it will travel. I guess I should bring a cooler or something. <laughs> yeah. Try ice, man. I don't mind, might get too cold. So I saw this video of this guy named Max Kane who was calling the FDA to turn himself in for a milk event before it happened. Did you see that? <laughs> no. It was hilarious. It, but it, his was for November 1st. Is there another one happening somewhere on November 1st? It sounds like it. I don't know anything about it, though. I will post this video. It's really hilarious. It's him over a period of days sitting in his office, his home office, trying to call the FDA and turn himself in preemptively. And he went through so much bureaucracy that it actually gave me hope that it's that hard to turn yourself into a federal agency. I mean, it took him like eight days and like 20 calls. Wow. Cause yeah. everybody, everybody's like, you know, this is the FDA. No, this is the egg department. You want the milk department. And then they'd give him the number for the milk department and he'd call them and, and uh, they'd send him over to the milk. You know, it was like somebody's on vacation. No, they're not. I mean, it was just, an incredible bureaucracy so that may be the saving grace is the government is a lumbering dinosaur that chews on its own tail and doesn't realize it Man, we'll, can't even get them to transfer them we'll we'll be back with more shortly we're gonna go uh sell some sell some things here and convince you of things 
<laughs> Hi, I'm Nima Vidati from the Freedom Fiends podcast, and I'm excited about Vaporsmith's electronic cigarettes. I dig the taste, and I dig the freedom to vape anywhere the nanny staters would wet their pants if I smoked. Vaporsmiths.com is run by a liberty-loving entrepreneur, not some subsidized tax heater conglomerate. I'm Michael Dean of the Freedom Fiends, and I love Vaporsmiths. I smoked three packs of tobacco cigarettes a day for decades, but now I'm only using Vaporsmiths. I love the flavors, I don't smell like smoke, and I save money, so I have more to spend on ammo and treats for my kitties. Available in four strengths and ten delicious flavors. Reds, Classics, Turkish, Menthol, Strawberry, Cherry, Vanilla, Coffee, Minty Mint, and Cloves. Go to Vaporsmiths.com. Use coupon code FREEDOMFIEND to get 25% off your order. This is a limited time offer. Vaporsmiths at Vaporsmiths.com. What's up, wow. G Fox? This is M Dub. I use Twitter a little bit. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, well, we have to. Wait, wait, wait. Before you do that, because we're supposed to be more professional, you're responding to something people couldn't hear. Or could they hear it? I guess they could hear it. Yeah, it said, Do you love Twitter? And I was like, yeah, I love Twitter, but I don't really use Twitter. Do you use Twitter? Well, yeah, like I said, once in a while. Just I use it more for promoting stuff. We got a live it, call it. Go ahead. <laughs> we got a live oh, call-in no, number up? here. We have a live call-in number here if people want to call in on the Freedom Fiends Live. It's 307-215-5171. Again, that number is 307 307- 215-5171 or Skype to username kittyfeet1 you can call in and tell us what's on your mind and uh, we'll argue with you no we'll probably agree with you we'd like to get a guy we could argue with we'd like to get a girl or guy we could we, we always you know we're preaching to the choir sometimes here so so if you think the government is a good thing and it helps us and it's our federal family call in and tell us why yeah I want to talk to some callers last time we couldn't take callers or you had to put me on hold and then have somebody else come on. <laughs> now that was cause just cause you're on probation. It was your first time. No, I'm kidding. It was, it was, it was <laughs> right. a limitation. It was, uh, we couldn't get mumble to work, but we spent about 17 hours configuring mumble this week and got it to work without the echo. It wasn't that bad. Okay. About an hour and seven minutes. Yes. <laughs> There you go. So today, I saw this headline right after, uh, well, this is about a week old. It's from the response to the shooting in uh, Colorado. Today and in the immediate future, the LAPD will be providing high visibility patrol to major theaters in Los Angeles, as well as other sporting events, concerts, and crowded venues police said in a statement. And I'm thinking like watching a movie surrounded by armed goons sounds fun. Uh, as if you didn't need one more reason to wait for it to come to DVD. Well, yeah, I made that image that said it was a picture of the, it's kind of in bad taste, I think, or people said it was too soon, but, uh, it was a, it was a picture of the police tape outside the theater and it said, uh, downloading movies could save your life. Well, yeah. Yeah. I don't know about the too soon thing. That doesn't really count anymore when you have the internet in front of you. I know. And there was actually an onion news piece about, the reaction to it and it said like everybody knows that this 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 and this will happen on this timeline and it was like and in two weeks everyone will have forgotten about it which yep. uh everyone except gun grabbers will have it's been about two weeks i don't hear that much about it anymore it was non-stop 24 7 for a few days and uh yeah people are crazy man people are crazy yeah it's definitely insane i mean <laughs> I don't know. I, I like the idea of uh, getting movies. Like, I just watched uh, 12 Monkeys again the other night. That came out in, what, like 94, 95 or something? Yeah, probably. Probably You probably watched one that was ripped from a VHS. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Actually, it was on Netflix, but that's okay. And I was just watching it, and it was funny how they were talking about all this stuff that happens in 1996, but it's actually the future. Which is now. Well, that's the thing with, like... The, the genre of what's, you know, cyberpunk or whatever. It's like it always takes place in the not too distant future. And the government is always like some one world government corporation, Monsanto kind of government. And, uh, you know, it looks a lot like now, but the technology is a little more advanced and it's a little more tyrannical. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't have any implants with radio transmitters in my teeth that I need to pull out as far as I know. Do you? No, I don't. Uh, I definitely. 
<laughs> well, speaking of different future movies, I want my freaking hoverboard. What's that from? Really? Back to the Future. Come on. Oh, Back to the Future. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you know, there's this whole bunch of movies that you and DJ know really well because uh, you were the age for them, and she had kids that are the age for them, yeah. and she watched them with her kids, and I was like, I was busy shooting dope and playing in a rock band and being a rock star, so I didn't watch, I, I didn't have a TV, you know, sometimes they had them in a hotel room, but. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, but I just watched the pay-per-view porn. Well, I had, I had uh, Back to the Future 2 recorded off of HBO on a VHS tape, and I wore that tape out every day after school. That was like the first thing I was doing. <laughs> Yet I still have no hoverboard, and it's almost 2014. Or well, you know, when people say, like, without the government, who would take care of the roads? I think without the government, we wouldn't need roads because uh, <laughs> yeah. everyone would have hoverboards that someone designed in their garage that they couldn't now because there'd be so much regulation against doing it. I heard about these hacker guys that were uh, figuring out how to make solar paneled roads, like instead of having all this black asphalt all, stretching all over the place they could have a bunch of uh real high impact solar panels running all the electricity for street lights and all that good stuff you know a, a real reason that probably wouldn't hap would not happen is in our society as it is now is because roads are classically one of the biggest places that there's graft and payoffs and uh favorism you know oh i saw your post the other night yeah yeah it yeah, took me a second. I had to read it a couple of times to understand what the hell was going on. Let me find that and read it. Yeah, it's a total like, you know, who would who would who would build the roads? And it was this uh <clears throat> that was actually from unintended consequences. Oh, and, okay. And it was uh it was it was a governor. It was like his inner monologue. Yeah. I can't spell governor. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> I know what I'll search. Quid pro quo. That that was in there. It was just interesting the way they were talking about how, you know, cousins of brother-in-laws or something were the engineers on a certain project, so they got the bid even though it would cost twice as much for yeah. their non-union employees to do it or something. I don't <laughs> yeah, know. and I was thinking, what non-union employees cost less than union employees? I'm thinking, <laughs> yeah. But I was thinking <laughs> mafia non-union employees. Yeah. When was yeah. when was this written exactly? Like ninety six or something. Okay. Yeah, he he says uh, the governor's calling him on the phone, calling the state senator on the phone, asking him for a favor, and it's for a bridge, and and he says, "You're welcome, governor." And then he's thinking to himself, uh, thinking to himself, "Yeah, can't find it, man. F it, f it. Let's talk about something good, man. Talk about something good." Um. Well, I I've got. Our buddy Derek J. I'm interviewing him on Wednesday. I'm excited about that. Excellent. You can talk yeah, about his, his uh, where he gets his fashion, wonderful fashion sense from. Yeah, that's exactly what I want to talk to him about: is fashion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like our buddy Ed asking if I was going to wear a tie. I didn't know how to respond to that. If you're going to wear a tie when you interview him, or for today? For today. Wow, that's weird. I don't know where that came from. I don't wear ties. ties. Well, Nemo wears ties. You know, you're taking Nemo's place for the day, so Nemo wears ties. When you guys are recording? No. <laughs> exactly. No, you wore them at I work. I don't have my webcam on. I used to have to wear ties to work. It, it just sucked. It felt like a monkey all day. While doing what? AutoCAD or CAD? Yeah, yeah. It was like my first job doing the AutoCADs. So what do you the, think uh, about that uh, that printable gun idea? I knew we were going to segue right into that. Uh, yeah, I think it's awesome, and I kind of want. I need to talk to that guy. I need to contact. Him. What was his name again? I just listened to it, uh, like two days ago. Cody. <laughs> Cody. Yeah. We should talk about that here some more. Yeah. In a bit, because we have to go pay some bills. Because that's how the fiends are. We're all about the anarcho-capitalism. We got it. We got it. I'm stacking mad Bitcoin, bitches. Don't forget the spinny coin on your homepage. Yeah, where people can donate. Yeah. Well, there's a couple ads for that, too. Worms. Should decisions on what you put in your body be left up to people whose very job depends on keeping certain plants illegal? Or do you believe in freedom of ingestion? 
The Genome Project is a cannabis science community founded by a leading DNA scientist. We fight ignorance with information. We don't have all of the answers, but we put all of our proceeds into finding them. If this requires sequencing the genomes of a forbidden plant, we've done it. If it requires leaving the country for the free pursuit of science, we've done that as well. The Genome Project is an ongoing crowdsourced experiment in free pursuit of the truth on cannabinoid sciences. Join us and participate in studying Mary Jane's genome. Get the app by searching Jane-Ohm on iTunes. The app is only $1.99 and all proceeds go to furthering and disseminating scientific truth. You must be 17 or older to download the app. Search Janeom on iTunes. That's J-A-N-E-O-M-E. Tired of the false economy? Want to carry real money in a form that people will dig getting? Don't Tread on Meme now has Freedom Fiends and Guns and Weed Silver Dime cards. Collect all four. Trade them with your friends. Freedom Fiends Silver Dime cards are also great for starting conversations with statists about liberty. Go to freedomfiends.com today and click the link at the top that says Silver Dime Cards. That's freedomfiends.com. Like the... I like M Dub. Shorter. Yeah, it is. That yeah. makes sense. That's why I like G Fox. Yep. Yeah. So that guy's name is Cody Wilson. It's uh, making the printable gun, and there's an interview on Anarchy Gumbo, which is at kittyfeet.com. Like the feet of a cat, kittyfeet.com. So I found this quote from Unintended Consequences. It's the internal thoughts of the less corrupt politician talking to the more corrupt politician. And he says, uh, you know, the governor's trying to get the state rep to uh, vote to build this bridge. And the state rep is thinking in his head while he's on the phone with him. He says, um, I realize exactly how important this is to you, you grinning, pardon-selling mushmouth. Your wife's ne'er-do-well brother-in-law owns the land where the bridge is going to be built, and the price the state is going to pay will make him a rich man. By putting the bridge a hundred yards east, you could save the taxpayers almost a million dollars. And I know damn well that the firm lined up to do the concrete work is owned by your brother's lawyer, by your lawyer's cousin. He'll use non-union labor, which is fine, but he'll charge double what I could get the union boys to do it for. And five to one, he goes light on the mix and pays off the engineering firm that'll be testing the casting samples. <laughs> Yep. Yep. So that's like multi tiered corruption in that. Yeah, it's like without the government, who would build the roads? Someone that would do it better and more honestly <laughs> for less money. Yep. 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 No more potholes. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen this truck. I was watching, I forget. It was one of those shows on the Discovery Channel or Science Channel or something where they had this machine that just slowly cruises down the road. And it rips up all the asphalt and mixes it together into some new concoction. Like it, I guess it puts in a little bit of fresh asphalt with it too. But then as that's all going on, it's also depositing fresh tarmac down onto the road. So it comes through and just like scoops everything up, mixes it all together, and puts it back down on the road. That sounds like it would just replace the need for people, except the driver maybe. Well, regardless, it gets it done in like a day. <laughs> you know, cool. like a whole stretch of road going all the way down. And, it, and just the efficiency, you know, it's not, it's like now when they redo a road, they come in and break up all the asphalt and load it up into a dump truck and yeah. take it off. Most places probably won't get that <clears throat> machine though because they're, they're, whoever's doing it the hard way is, you know, the governor's lawyer's brother in law. And they're too busy spending money, you know, arming the local police departments with tanks that can punch a hole in your li <laughs> living room and insert nerve gas or right. tear gas. I think the guy is actually privately owned, like it's his own company. Like he made, he made the machine himself and everything. <laughs> It'd be really funny if like as a proof of concept to try to sell this thing, if he just went out and just without permission, just ripped up some roads and made them better. <laughs> yeah, seriously. There, <laughs> that. there was this uh, movie I saw. I can't remember the name of it. It was like a 10 minute film that I saw on a film festival in LA that I had one of my films in. And it was, uh, it was basically this guy who, noticed he noticed a problem with something of the government's and fixed it and broke the law to do it and filmed the whole thing it was this thing on the 101 overpass you know where they have the big green sign saying like you turn this way for this road and this way for this exit and etc and it was really confusing 
So he went up there, he got like three guys wearing like, you know, overalls and went up there with a ladder and painted it and fixed it. So it made sense. And he like, it showed him in this thing, like in this little documentary, like going on the government website, seeing like what color paint they use, what font they use. And he did it exactly right. And he like painted the sign to work, you know, so it made sense and it didn't confuse (laughs) people and get them lost. And he just filmed the whole thing and he just looked like government workers doing it. And, uh, you know, I'm sure that that was a felony to, or at least a misdemeanor to do it, but it was, it was hilarious, man. Well, see, yeah, you could, what, obviously you would get like vandalism or something, but they could throw in all kinds of, uh, Oh yeah. Endangering people. Cause he was hanging over the highway doing it. Um, oh, what else? Uh, probably using like, you know, not the right environmental paint or, uh, you know, not having, probably using non-union labor. They could get him for, uh, you know, disturbing the peace, scaring the public. Cause you know, scaring the public is the government's job and they want to have a monopoly on that. So whenever you do something that like scares the public, uh, okay. they want to stop you. Yeah. Yeah, well, see, I yeah. mean, that's like, that reminds me of the, the Robin Hooding stuff that people do where they go around and throw quarters into expired uh, parking meters. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's illegal. That's amazing. Fiend that's phone. Illegal. Fiend hey, phone. we got a fiend call. Nice. Fiend phone. Fiend phone. Hello, fiend. You're on the air. Who is this? Hey, Michael. It's Steven in Kansas. Hey, Steven in Kansas. How you doing? Doing well. How are you? Good. What's on your mind today? Well, um, actually, I thought I'd call and talk about audio. Excellent. Garrett and I are big fans of audio. Yeah. Audio is um, fun. And I, uh, I listened to my call from last week, and I really kind of came off sounding like crap, so I thought I'd uh, try and do something about it. You got a good mic going there, don't you? I do. Garrett, you could turn up more, by the way, speaking of audio. Okay. We can do that. So, Stephen, what mic are you using? Uh, well, right now I am on an Audix OM5. Hmm. What type of microphone is that? It is a dynamic cardioid, uh, basically vocal mic. Audix what? What is it? OM5. OM5. Going into what mixer? Uh, actually not into a mixer. I'm into a Shure X2U USB Pre. Cool. Nice. There's a, do you have, um, some kind of Dolby or noise reduction going on there? Uh, not anything above and beyond what would be in Windows or Skype. Okay. I, kn- I know there's some noise reduction in, in Skype. Because you sound great. You sound way better than a phone call. But um, when you talk, I'm getting, you know, like a little bit of background noise. And then when you stop talking, it goes away, which it would actually be better if it was there all the time. It's really quiet. But I notice when it goes away, it comes back. I, does Skype have that? I've never had that happen with a caller before. But we've never had a caller that had such good audio that, it, you know, maybe the, right. noise, the noise detection in Skype could tell the difference. Uh, it's entirely possible. I'll uh, I'll play around with some more stuff and and give it a try again sometime. Yeah, that's a really expensive uh, carbon mic or conde- um, cardioid. Uh, what do you call them? Not condenser. It's a dynamic. Dynamic. Yeah, two hundred and sixty <laughs> bucks. That's a damn. well. I, I audio is my profession. So what do you do? Uh, I am an acoustical consultant. What is that uh, like for buildings? I, yeah, I work with architects and engineering firms and. And we do uh, room acoustics uh, for performance spaces, and we also design sound systems. Nice, cool. nice. Did you uh, <clears throat> did you happen to do the the sound? Um, did did you consult for the sound for the room the room uh, improvements on the outhouse in Lawrence, Kansas? <laughs> I, I did not. No, I didn't. We, I uh, didn't think so because that place yeah, we do was generally do larger spaces. But <laughs> that, that place is a windowless concrete bunker and sounds like it. But it was fun. Yep. Well, we do get involved in a lot of a lot of clubs. We're actually working on one right now that the the musicians are the ones complaining about the acoustics in the space. So, you know, there's another place that my band Bomb played a couple times. Well, we played one and a half times, which is an interesting story. It was in. <laughs> it was in. Um, <laughs> Kansas City. I can't remember if it was Kansas City, Kansas, or Kansas City, Oklahoma. Right? That's the other one. Yeah. Kansas City. Sure. It's in two it's states, what, right? It's Kansas City, Kansas, and Kansas City, Missouri. Yeah, and it's State Line Street is the one between the middle. And if you take an underage girl across that street for anything, you're crossing state lines for immoral purposes. And I was we were, we were warned of that by the promoter. That's the kind of place it was. You know, we didn't do it, but uh, so <laughs> the. Uh, <laughs> We played a place called Jazzafraz. You ever heard of that? 
I have not, no. It was an art gallery that had shows, and it was all ages it's on the second floor. You had to hump your gear up these narrow stairs. Interesting. We played there one and a half times. What about what by that? What I mean by that is we played there once. Great show. Came back a year later. Played again. Um, we were setting up. We you know the the opening band had played. We were setting up, doing sound like sound check. We got there late, so we did the sound check in front of the audience. We we're about to play, and cops rush rush into there. And all of a sudden, I can smell natural gas really small. And the cops are like, cops and firemen, they're like, everybody, you have to get out. And it was like, you know, it was, it was kind of, they, they weren't busting people either. They were just like, evacuate for your safety. It was, um, turned out the, the abortion clinic next door, somebody dropped a gallon of the liquid through it that they used to scent natural gas as like a terrorist thing to like uh, sh- try to shut that down. Egg scent. Yeah, to try to shut down the, uh, <laughs> the abortion clinic next door. So... Yeah, do you want to Jeez. stay? Do you want to stay on and talk more? Sure. All right, worms. We will be back after we go sell some things in the free market here on Freedom Fiends Live. We're not saying was, the Freedom Fiends are the good. one true path to anarchist yeah, okay. liberation. Yeah. Check out the Anarchy Gumbo podcast. Michael W. Dean of the Freedom Fiends cooks up a very special blend of liberty, guns, sex, rock and roll, drugs, and thriving in spite of the state in an increasingly worrying world. All with a rotating cast of nifty guests who are also up in the middle of the night. The Anarchy Gumbo Podcast. A tasty stew of freedom and fun. Subscribe at kittyfeet.com. That's K-I-T-T-Y-F-E-E-T dot com. What does freedom mean? Tune in to LRN.FM to find out. LRN.FM is the Liberty Radio Network, a collection of live talk radio and podcasts, all coming from a principled pro-liberty perspective. LRN.FM show hosts aren't left, right, or conspiracy kooks. You can tune in 24-7 to LRN.FM via your phone, computer, satellite, and more. Listen free anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. You can subscribe to Freedom Fiends via the RSS link on the top right of any page. It's orange. Or you can subscribe via email at the subscribe by email link at the top of the right sidebar on any page. It's a little bit below the search field. You'll need to respond to a one-time confirmation email, but after that, you will only receive an email each time a new episode posts. The Freedom Fiends respect your privacy. We will not spam you and will not sell, rent, or share your email address. And you are free to unsubscribe at any time. Yeah. Yeah. Yo. Yeah. G Fox and M Dub. What, what? Yeah. You know, on the first edition of $30 Film School, the graphic artist used uh, film reels for O's. What does that mean? Okay. I thought I knew what that meant. It means that the graphic artist made a really cheesy, cliche decision and thought he was cool. But what's the O's part? The O's in the word, you know, like in the lettering. Whenever okay. O shows up in the words. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that was a great caller, man. We got uh call in line. If you want to call in, talk to the fiends. Talk to a fiend and a half here. It's uh, 307-215-5171. That's 307-215-5171. Or Skype to username KittyFeet1. Garrett's a, Garrett's a fiend. Garrett's a fiend. Oh, I mean, yeah. Really, there's really two fiends. Then there's the fiend, by, me and Nima. Then there's the fiend behind the scene, which is Deborah Jean Dean, the fiend behind the scene, who does uh, a lot of the voiceovers. And uh, then there's the fiends with a small F, which is the fiends fans. But then there's like, there's some, there's some that are kind of in between fans and fiends. You know, like you, Frank Fidati, you know. Yep. People that know our deepest, darkest secrets, you know, like, you know, you know where the gold and the bodies are buried, so. I, I can't not call you fiend. <laughs> yeah, this is true. I have passwords. <laughs> I know. I know. We could hack each other's sites. That'd be a pod beef. That'd be a pod We were doing thing. a little bit today. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. I was trying to, your phone wasn't working and I had to get in to see like what you were doing on your website because I wanted to do it on my website because my thing wasn't working with the little chicklets where you share socially. It was keeping people on AT&T phones from viewing my site. Which is AT and T's fault. That was weird. I, I can change my site easier than I can change AT and T. So uh, I just hack your site because I couldn't get you on the phone. Well, but I hacked it because I helped you set it up and I have the passwords. Well, exactly. Yeah, there's a a level of trust there already. 
Yeah. So I have a conspiracy theory about whoever's throwing firecrackers in my neighborhood on the weekends at four in the morning. Um, Besides the jackalope theory? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a conspiracy theory. I don't really believe it, but it's fun to entertain. Every, we're having elections coming up like everyone is, and there's all these people running for like city council and, you know, state this and everyone. And everyone like... They're coming to my house and dropping these things off in my mailbox, even though it says no solicitors. I need to put something that says no political crap. Um, but they drop these flyers off and they all like have the same, like two or three, uh, like three out of the same five bullet points of what they're going to do. You know, jobs, jobs. And, you know, one is safer right. streets and safer streets to me means a cop on every corner. I don't want that. And I, and the streets are safe already. So it's like, uh, you know, safer from people smoking weed or something. I think they mean, but, um, I was thinking maybe it's like one of these politicians paid his nephew or something to go out and scare people with firecrackers at night so people really think there's a problem in the streets and they want to get voted in to clean it up. Wow. So a firecracker display as a political strategy. Yeah, but not like July 4th. Not like not like the patriotism building type. That doesn't work anymore. It does to an extent, but really what they're doing now is the fear building exercises. Hmm. Well, maybe people were just excited about the meteor shower and wanted to do their own uh, land-to-air meteors or something. Yeah, it was like three hours after it was really waned. Yeah, maybe, I still wish I would have seen that. That's cool. Maybe you seen the Mars drunk, rover thing. Maybe it was maybe this was just some drunk Wyoming hillbillies <laughs> on a Saturday night. That's more likely. Yeah, I, and that's what I feel like is going on there. Uh, I wouldn't. I, saw, I wouldn't be too concerned yet. I saw something about the Mars rover. What about it? Uh, just, I think it's freaking awesome <laughs> that, they, that we have something rolling around on Mars terrain, taking pictures and stuff. But do we really? Or is that on a soundstage in Burbank? <laughs> well, that's a, I'm I, I've, I've, I've seen a few memes uh, get put up on the internet with a little robot with, uh, you know, these aliens holding up pictures in front of the camera lens so that <laughs> we think it's a barren planet. <laughs> and they're really having a big party behind it. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a sci-fi geek, so I like to let my mind wander in in that field. What was I'm, that? I'm with I'm with Nima. I want to go. I want to go. You know, space steading. Yeah, but United States already like spilled its seed on Mars and the Moon. So where are you going to go, man? Well, I don't know. Not to a planet in the solar system. How about? Good luck with that. Let me know how yeah. it works out. I'll uh, okay. Let me know when your chip ends up. I'll give you five bucks and uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll the, get you that we'll much starting- closer. We got a Kickstarter program going for it. Help us build a spaceship. Yeah. Speaking of which, someone was supposed to call in and beg for money today. Where is Joe? Joe, call in and beg for money. He's uh he's he's out spreading the fiends on his motorcycle in Hawaii, and uh, I guess he's run out really? of gas. He's, he's almost out of gas, and he wants to beg for money. So I told him to call in and beg for money. Okay. So has he got a chip in sub or something? <laughs> yeah. He got a chip on his shoulder shove. No, I don't know what it's called. I donated some money to somebody uh, who had car troubles on their way to Porkfest in 2010. They, uh, I believe she actually got to Porkfest because a few people were able to chip in 10, 20 bucks. That's cool. That's uh, yeah. somet- Sometimes people do a scam like that too, but it's usually m- more dire. Usually it's like, you know, they hack someone's Facebook account and say, I'm oh, in jail right. in Paris. Please send a $1,000. Uh, my, uh, my wife's parents got a call like that recently. They got a call from someone... Uh, you know, our, their grandkid, my step, my stepson is in the army and they got a call from him, uh, a guy pretending to be him, uh, that, that was oh, saying he yeah. that said he was like in jail in Spain and you know, my, my father-in-law is no dummy. And he's like, um, what's your mother's first name? And the guy's like, <laughs> uh, they won't let me talk about that now. But send the money. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's better than taking a guess. <laughs> it's Susan. Uh, Gabby? Yes. Okay. We'll yeah. send the money. Well, I think, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think somebody had, uh, he you know, this person ups. had le- le- legitimacy. Like, you know, we knew who it was. And she was on, she was going on her own personal blog and talking about it, too. So we knew it wasn't like a any sort of... Con was, artist it, was it was it Stacy Litz? Uh, no, it it was not. It was not. Does she Stacey have a chip Litz. in for legal funds? That'd be funny. I feel like. Um, oh no! You know what it was? She did have. She was promoting the uh, fund to help out 
the people that she got busted with their legal funds. There was that <laughs> fund that I saw going on, and okay. she actually donated to, which was surprising. But I guess that was kind of to save face a little bit. Yeah, I interviewed a guy who we, me and him, were bashing her. For those who don't know, Stacy Litz is a chick who was big in the Liberty community, and then um, got busted for drugs and turned all her friends in, or turned three, two friends and one stranger in, set them up, and uh, to try to get. A better deal and actually didn't get a better deal because she got outed fortunately and uh yeah. you know some more people didn't get busted and then they you know the, i think the fed said oh your deal's no longer good you got you got outed so you know she she ratted and didn't get an advantage from it so double whammy but um you know and i still read her blog once in a while and she's like why is everyone picking on me and i'm like you know in most yeah. societies you end up killed for this you know you, you do well, this in the hood you know you're lucky you're with non-aggressionists you know i hate to, i almost hate to say it but i'm kind of glad that happened not necessarily to her because i actually i i wasn't really good friends with stacy but i knew her like i've seen her at plenty of events and stuff up in uh philadelphia and whatnot and we've talked quite a few times and you know you wouldn't see something like this coming and that's what i i kind of yeah i'm hesitant to say i'm glad this happened because if it happened to her and so many people like in that community, they realized that, okay, you know, it's, it, it just got real. It's, it's real life. It's not just some movie that you're watching anymore. Yeah. This can happen to you. So you got to be more careful. A, um, and if you're in the, you know, if you're in that business of, uh, you know, distributing certain forms of medication or whatever you want to call it, you, you can't be so public with so many things, and if you do get popped, yeah. you got to keep your you got to keep your mouth shut. Otherwise, this is going to happen. You're going to get written off, and people are going to uh, despise you. And to be clear, I wasn't threatening her, saying people get killed for this. You know, I was I was oh, saying right. that's what happens in the hood. You know, snitches get stitches. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right, you know, yeah. and she's she's uh, safe from that, I guess, and still blogging. Like, why is everyone picking on me? And I'm like you're really, really lucky. You should just shut up. And people are probably like, why are you bringing this up now? And my thing is kind of like, you know, things happen good or bad in the Liberty community. And then they're, everyone chatters about them for a week and then they're forgotten. It's, you know, it's good to revisit this kind of stuff. And uh, Don't be a snitch. Don't be a snitch. And don't be stupid, too. And really, I've heard it said, you can't be an agorist and an activist. you got to pick one or the other. That's, yeah, yeah. That, there's, a, there's a fine line in there. Yeah. 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 Worms, worms, worms. We'll be back after selling more things to you. I want to talk about Freedom that more. All right. We this have is no the Freedom seconds. Fiends. Yeah, this is the Freedom Fiends Live. Yeah. I'm doing better with the brakes. I mean, the, um, I can't call them brakes. Um, <laughs> no, wait. You can call them brakes, but not right before the break. See, I'm like, I'm going to like, uh, I'm going to journalism school through Ian's phone calls with me. I, I, a good thing. I think you're overthinking it too. I know it's it's really it's nerve wracking for me and it shouldn't be because it's like I am so used to doing podcasts every week that are not live, right? And uh, and I'm a pretty good public speaker. I don't like to do it, but I have no fear of getting up in a crowd of any kind and talking if they're friendly. Uh, That's something I've been trying to get over. Talk in front of people. Talking in front of people, yeah. Like I can handle it a little bit, but. I'm I'm quick and I get nervous. You picture him naked. Different. You picture him naked fingering each other. <laughs> okay, yeah, that that'll help. I, actually, I tend to just like look around and scan the crowd, but don't make eye contact with anybody so I don't get distracted. <laughs> huh? Yeah, yeah, but you know, really I've, talked in fr- I've talked in front of people twice. I think. So. Uh, I used to do it all the time because I well yeah. I played in a band. You know, in front of people all the time yeah. and talk but but also I did a lot of AA and there's a lot of talking in front of people in AA so okay you know, if you want to get sober you have to you have to be a good public speaker you have to go to Toastmasters no I'm kidding but I've heard of Toastmasters yeah it's um, it's where people go to learn public speaking yeah and I, I've heard actually that like really really does help yeah um, the um the guy that's the star of my new uh DVD that's coming out soon Jared uh, Jared Waltz, who is in the, he's the star of Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume One. Yeah, yeah. He, he is a toast master. You can pre-order that now, can't you? Yeah, you're just a master at getting toasted. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start a group. 
Toasted Masters. Toasted, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so people can call in. We got a caller who's going to call in in Cyberbag for gas money because he's out on tour for the Fiends. I guess he's on tour just for himself, but uh, also right. spreading the Fiends. You know, everywhere he goes, he like, this is the guy that picks people up hitchhiking in his car and makes them listen to the Fiends. I love that. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 In Hawaii. But and he's on a motorcycle now? Yeah, I don't know much about Hawaii, but all I know is like Dog the Bounty Hunter. I mean, to me, Hawaii is a bunch of like aboriginal ice smoking crack, you know, speed freaks, but it may be different <laughs> than that. Okay. Okay. I, I See, I think of the surf. I think of the beach and surfing when I think of Hawaii. I think of homeless speed freaks that live on the beach when I think of Hawaii because of Dog the Bounty Hunter. Okay. See, I don't watch Dog the Bounty Hunter. Yeah, it's really horrible. It's really like really statist and he, you know, kicks down people's doors who have drug warrants and drags them in and then like handcuffs them, gives them a cigarette and prays with them. It's horrible, man. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. And then like gives them he's it gives them some money. Like here's 20 bucks for your book in, you know, so you'll have some money on the book in, in, in I, jail. Can buy I some can't even handle can buy some skittles. I can't, I can't even handle all that repo stuff. And repo is a legitimate thing. Like in Libertarian Paradise, there would be probably more repo, you know? Yeah. Because it's like you signed a contract, you reneged on the contract, and they're fulfilling the contract you agreed to by taking your stuff. That's, yeah, but there's not going to be a 26% interest rate either. That's true. Loan, sh <laughs> loan sharks in LibPair will give you better rates than that. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, if you do pay your fine after the thing went through they might cancel it not just pick the car up anyway i think it would be handled a lot more yeah rationally yeah well the government would like every car to have a shutoff switch and they're probably working towards that you know, yeah. i mean i i saw this thing did you see a thing i shared of that new cop like tiny little killdozer the cops have yeah um you know, it's this little like one man, de two man device with like. It kind of looks like a bobcat, like one yeah, of those uh, yeah. excavator things. Yeah. yeah, it's an armored bobcat with gun turrets. You know, they can like crash through your living room wall with it and shoot you. And, uh, you know, one of the cops on the cop board I was looking at was talking about it. And his quote was like, yeah, this is great. This is, you know, because policing is really stuck in the 60s. And I'm like, what? In the 60s, cops were like friendly and carried 38 revolvers <laughs> and didn't, you know act like goons as much well they did in chicago but uh you know and i'm thinking like if that's the 60s if the, what we have now is the 60s what they really want i think is everyone's required to have a smart home that you know when they want to come get you it just locks you in and there's cameras in it all the time to see what you're doing and when you break a law they just lock yeah. you in your home and they don't have to pay for jail because you're already in it and you had to pay for it so moral of the story is don't talk to cops yeah, I was looking at some cop um, <laughs> slang on this cop site. It was unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> some of them were really funny and some were really offensive. Uh, their names for like fish and game were the Minnow Mounties and the Trout Scouts. Their name for um, Highway <laughs> Patrol Highway Patrol is AAA with a gun. Um, Fiend phone. The Department Fiend of Agriculture phone. Cops or the Cabbage Cops. Fiend phone. Okay, hang on Fiend a sec. Fiend phone. Here. Yeah, yeah. We got some. Fiend Hello, who is this? Yo, what's up, Michael? It's Joey the Ranch. How you doing, buddy? Hey, hey. So, uh, hey. what are you out hey. doing? Where are you, and what are you doing? Uh, right now, I'm in uh, Owasa, Oklahoma. Huh. And I'm out on a Freedom Ride. What's the Freedom Ride? The Freedom Ride is just me getting off the island. Oh, I thought it was something like some free. Patriot bikers did or something. But no, fuck that. <laughs> 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 oh, but then I love to sorry. Um... <laughs> yeah, I actually talked to uh, to Bad Quaker a bit ago on the internet and told him I'd be up near his way. I want to like go and hang out with him for a hot minute, uh, maybe get some you know, dinner or something like that. Ohio. Um, but yeah, man, it's just uh, it's a way for me to get uh, to get out and and off and get off and getting out. Where you know, where where'd you start from? You're from Hawaii, but I know you didn't ride a bike. I am from Hawaii, from yeah, Oklahoma. I keep, uh, motorcycling in uh, Colorado, and so I went and picked it up uh, last. Uh, what's what day was that? Tuesday. And yeah. uh, I'm in Oklahoma now, making my way to North Carolina to visit some friends, and then up to New York, and then up to Maine, and then back down around, back to Colorado. Yeah, nobody comes to Wyoming. It's out of the way for everything, which is why I live mm. here. That's why I live you here. You know, I almost, I actually almost uh, trumped you and just went there anyway, and then, like, called you from uh, where I actually heard about you, which was in Casper. 
Yeah, people should Last not year. show up. People should not show up in Casper and call me if they want. If they want to visit me, they should. Uh, they should give me some more notice than that. I didn't think that was a good idea. That's why I didn't do it. <laughs> yeah, and people should really not try to figure out where I live and show up on my doorstep. That's bad news. But um, yeah, exactly. So you're trying to get some gas money up, right? Oh, of course, man. I mean, these trips cost me a ton of money to do. Um, one because I live in Hawaii, and so you know, it's a plane ticket alone is a. The poor man's vacation, and uh, what do people get out of it? Off. What do people get out of it other than helping a guy with his vacation? Are you out spreading liberty? I'm out spreading liberty in a really weird way, actually. I just um, I'm literally since I stopped at this roadhouse a little bit ago uh, that had Wi-Fi, and I've literally turned about ten people on to Freedom Fiends. And I've got a whole table table full of people laughing, and uh, you know I've written <laughs> down the web address on a bunch of uh, paper napkins and receipts. Excellent. And uh, so they're checking that out. I'm also, you know, showing them my blog as well. And uh, what's your you know, blog? Big, and where could people uh, donate money to you and read your great well, blog? Well, Michael, funny thing you should ask. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, it, <laughs> it's it's dot tumblr dot com, and Tumblr is spelled T U M B L R. Um, All right. Well, yeah, I will I will link it, that in this episode too. I'll put a link to that. Thanks, man. I appreciate and that. That's awesome. We appreciate you calling anytime and um, we're going to let you go here and have some other callers come in and we're going to go sell some things word man do it thanks brother I love you I love you guys I'll talk to you later bye worms worms and worms and worms and worms we're not saying the freedom fiends are the one worms 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 Oh yeah, I did read this. You, you got an excellent review here. Making a new song here? Yeah. What are you gonna call it? Worms? You laughing at me, DJ? Yeah. I think I'm gonna leave this like sexy robo flanger on for this whole part here. See how it works. What do you think, man? It is sexy, Robo. It is. I'll turn it down a little bit so it's not uh, as much there. We don't. We don't want it like this. This sounds like the central scrutiny. It's your younger, younger brother. But uh, if I put about this much, it sounds pretty sexy. Yeah. The central scrutinizer's younger brother, who's actually good. Yeah. Well, that's how it is in uh, the Guns and Weed movie. It's me and Nemo both play brothers. One is Sergeant Dan Banning, who's bad. That's me, and Nemo plays his brother, Ban Banning. Actually, he's half brother. I, I feel like yeah. I feel like I'm talking to you, and you're on a toilet in a spaceship. <laughs> no, man, I'm in my the toilet of my windowless bunker. Yeah, I have microphones set up all over the house. Like you know, you go in the bathroom, there's a big gooseneck coming out of the wall <laughs> next to the enema bag. You know, so and <laughs> I'm kidding, man, I'm totally kidding. Yeah. So you feel like I'm in a spaceship in the bathroom. Yeah. 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 So did you see this guy in California? They call him Chairman Yee, but he's actually Senator Yee, who wants to outlaw all guns in California except guns that are bolt action. Okay. Um, he's putting forth a bill to outlaw guns in California except bolt dude, action. I, I'm so glad I'm not out there on the West Coast. You know, whenever gun grabbers say that they want to... You know, we don't want to outlaw guns. We just want you to have bolt actions and twenty twos. It's like they're not going to stop there. You know, JFK was killed with a bolt action. Uh, uh, I think MLK was MLK was probably killed with a bolt action. Um, Bobby Kennedy uh, was definitely killed with a twenty two. Reagan and Brady were shot with a twenty two. Uh, who else? Yeah, you know, so it's funny because I've been. There. I've been wanting to get a bolt action. Uh, you know, I have a 22 and a shotgun. My my 22 is semi-automatic, and you know, it's got a little 10 round magazine, which so it's 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 great fun for plinking. You know, just taking out soda cans and stuff, or or garden varmints. But then uh, the shotgun. <laughs> but then you know, I got the pump action shotgun, 12 gauge, and it's like I'd really like to get like a like a bolt action. 30 out six or something well really the most dangerous gun there is to the state is a bolt action gun with a scope in C- well not necessarily because of the state part of everything but i wanted to get a bolt action for the accuracy the nice long barrel and i like bolt action i'm not that good with one but uh so the state doesn't have to fear me now i'd never do anything violent unless you know someone kicked in my door but uh and then it'd be self-defense they might kill me 
but I'd go to heaven smiling. They'd go to hell. Well, it's a good hunting rifle. Yeah. Yeah, I shoot pigeons out the window. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> in, uh, there's a couple people that skeet shoot with rifles in that book, Unintended Consequences. That's someone that can really shoot, man, if you can skeet shoot with a rifle. Although, I don't That's recommend insane. it because, you know, a rifle bullet goes like four miles or two miles or something. I mean, yeah. unless you got like a nice big embankment behind you or something. Yeah. Or, you know, behind where you're throwing the clays at. Yeah, yeah so you, that's, I mean, bullets can go for miles. Yeah, it, shot, it, it's, shot it's, pellets it's, cannot. Exactly. Yeah. Shot pellets at, you know, I don't think I'd let someone do this to me, but at about 110 yards, you know, a leather jacket will stop shot pellets. I'm waiting for the, like, the spaceship toilet to flush now or something. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> I'll turn it off. <laughs> Is that what it sounds like? <laughs> a yeah. little, a little. <laughs> it's a quiet, it's a quiet flush, man. It's a robo flush. <laughs> if you notice that cops are starting to look more and more like RoboCop in the way they dress them. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I had never seen that shield until you posted it where it's got like the speaker mounted <laughs> in front of the. That's not the playing the freedom it. fiends. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. saying, go home slaves or we will kill you. Go yeah, home seriously. slaves or we will kill you. See, I wonder if those have like auditory um, weapons, uh, weapons in them. Yeah, too. You Maybe know, it's like, you know, you've seen the big sound cannons, right? That, yeah, like, I think you need the big speaker for that. Although eventually, yeah. you know, it'll there'll be an iPhone app for that. So, I mean, you could certainly, you know, play something loud and obnoxious, like any old screeching will do out of a speaker. <laughs> <laughs> I saw, I saw a really funny thing on the on the Daily Show where uh, John Stewart was showing those weapons being used at some Occupy Wall Street thing or something. And, oh, God. you know, he, 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 it was it was playing it. It was going like, row, 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 and people are right. running away and running away. And they're like, why is people running away, man? They're anarchists. They probably have that as their ringtone. <laughs> or have you heard the music these people listen to? They probably have that as their ringtone. <laughs> Allow me to show you the music of my people. <laughs> What's that from? That's funny. <laughs> It's just a bunch of memes I've seen. It'll be like a picture of uh, like a smoke alarm on the the ceiling, and it's like, oh, so you decided to make your own meal tonight. Let me play you the music of my people. <laughs> <laughs> In Soviet America, bank robs you. Yep. It's kind of like that, only uh, much, much younger. I really like what Bill Bupert said on uh, Bad Quaker Podcast. I'm paraphrasing, but it's something like, Elections are beauty contests for serial killers. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah. yeah. Bill Buford. Did I listen to that? I think I only got like halfway through that one. Well, it was a two-parter, too. It was great. That guy. That guy. Let me tell you, okay. man. That guy. Brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. Yeah, okay. So here's some more cop uh, stuff. Let's see. Cabbage Cops is the food and uh, fish and hogs people. Checkpoint Mickey is the cop stop at the beginning at, at uh, Disneyland where they search your bags, but they have real cops there. It's called Checkpoint Mickey. Now, this is my favorite was tube is cop slang for a shotgun. Get the tube. Huh. Okay. And then you there was think some, that'd be like more like an RPG or something. And then there were some really offensive ones, uh, but they're funny too. Doing the funky chicken is on the ground being tased. Edison, oh my God. <laughs> Edison, <laughs> Edison Medicine. Edison Medicine is using the taser. Like, get the Edison Medicine. Um, gutter tag is when a cop writes you a ticket or a citation, and then when you leave, he throws it on the ground in the gutter while submitting his copy to the court. So it results in a missed appearance and a warrant. Mm, oh. I, I wonder how often that goes on. And then... Uh, well, actually, I posted these in a friend of mine, an old girlfriend of mine from when I was a kid. We're still friends. Uh, uh, she said that's happened to her in New Jersey. And uh, then screen test is slamming on the brakes of the cop car. So the, vehicle, the subject in hus custody hits the barrier. Has, you know, His face hits the barrier between the front and back seats. Actually, that's kind of funny. Because you're, you're, uh, you know, you're cuffed and your hands are up. Yeah. You can't stop yourself. So. I'd do that to my friends if they won't sit down and shut up. So. That's funny, but it's horrible, man. It's just <laughs> it horrible is. that they have all these names, the, the funny stuff they've made up for for effing with people. Yeah. 
I, yeah. uh, I'm a, I, I cannot stand the police in any shape or form, but I do appreciate yeah. humor. Yeah. Yeah. I posted that picture of that little, um, that little bobcat that destroys houses for cops. Are you stealing from the fiends again? And I said, uh, and I said, uh, coming soon, coming soon to a living room near you. Oh, I'm looking at Chairman Yi. Yeah. <clears throat> that guy was born in China, and he's a U.S. Uh, senator. Isn't that bizarre? You don't have to be born in America to be the president, uh, a senator like you do the president. Well, right, yeah. I mean, I guess you have to be a citizen. But he's trying to bring, like, Chinese-style gun control to California. Government sucks. Government sucks. Government just, uh, you know, does most things wrong, hurts people with most of what they do. Whenever they do something right, someone else could do it better and cheaper without hurting people. Yeah, substitute that term most for everything. And <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they do some things right. I mean, they pick up my trash, but they have a monopoly on it. I can't pay someone else to do it. Agoras would do it better. Yep. They'd recycle the trash. So um, There you go. We're going to go. come back in a moment and have another caller. If someone wants to call in and knows the number, they can call in. Worms. 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 Oh, that was cool. <laughs> Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. You can it connect with the Freedom Fiends on Sunday. Yeah, so this is our uh, our last little segment here, and we'd love to have a caller call in. Call in number. How, can, how can they connect? They can connect with the Freedom Fiends on Sunday, 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 by calling 307 215 5171. That's 307 215 5171. Or Skype to username kittyfeet1. I'm putting What's that up, in man? my phone. I'm putting that in my phone book right now. Are you really? Yeah. Oh, so I, you can I call have, in. Yeah. And I, I have it in my Rolodex. So Beamers, Beamers now with 100 percent more fiends. New BMWs come with the Stitcher app and like a little streaming player. <laughs> so you can if you have a new Beamer, which you know most of the fiends do every couple right. months, every couple months, uh, you can you can listen to the Freedom Fiends and Bad Quaker and Free Talk Live. And the Anarchy Gumbo. There may be more, but I know those four are on Stitcher, which is the how you get around the stupidity of the fact that most cell phones can't like play audio on a damn page. Yeah, yeah, it's it's whack. I just like to download stuff straight to my computer yeah, me and, too. Then, and then slap it on my phone, override the last episode, keep it nice and clean. Yeah, I don't have a smartphone. I mean, my phone. It it's not it doesn't flip open. It's not that dumb. It slides open, but it and it has a QWERTY keyboard. It doesn't have a touch. Does it pad. have does it have an antenna? No. <laughs> Inside okay. on the circuit board, but does, yeah. It's got a color dis- display like you can yeah. look at pictures. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but it has buttons. Yeah, it's just not very smart. It's okay. I've actually gone on the web with it and it ended up costing me like $4 for 10 minutes and it was really slow and I couldn't do anything on there you know i couldn't post on facebook i couldn't like on facebook i couldn't play the audio on the freedom fiends uh, well, it was stupid man stupid i don't stupid know how phone. you do it man my phone has a kickstand how do i do it i don't leave the house man why do i need a phone well this is true okay well i'm a i'm a bit of a hermit in the evenings anyway. and you know i've got computers everywhere i mean i go in the bathroom i have a computer there i have microphones there cameras in the you bathroom know- you know, it's the best. I'll be, I'll be laying in bed at night and like, you know, just kind of like sc- scrolling through Facebook notifications or something. And I'll see something I need to do for my computer, but I won't get up and I will try and try and try to do it. For my phone. <laughs> Phones are dumb, different, man. Different browsers. Well, I don't feel like getting up. Like, what's the point of paying this ridiculous phone bill if I'm just going to go use my computer? Do iPads still play? Pay, uh, uh, do iPads not play Flash? Uh, I believe that is still the case. I that is don't so have retarded, one man. myself. And that was because well, of some like pod beef that Steve Jobs had. phone. Fiend exactly. phone. Nice. There we go. Fiend phone. We have Robert. Hello, Robert. Hello, Michael. How are you? Good. What's up? Not much. I thought I'd call in, be a first-time caller. What's on your mind? Where are you calling from? Uh, Connecticut. Ooh. 
Are you wealthy? Yeah. No. <laughs> is there a, is there a wrong side of the tracks in Connecticut too? Uh, well, I live in Manchester, <laughs> but uh, I guess so. Certain parts of it. I know. I'm like insulting you. I'm like, are you are you rich or are you poor? <laughs> no. It's are you not. rich or are you homeless? <laughs> Calling from my chromed robot turd, right? Homeless. Yeah, we were just insulting <laughs> chromed robot turds. Actually, a lot of homeless people have cell phones these days, and I think in Cal- <laughs> I think in San Francisco they tax you and then buy them for the homeless. Yes, they do. I was kidding. I, Is that true? I was k- totally kidding. Really? No, they re- they really do have a, f- a phone program for that. Um, uh, how they I pay for ta- it? Uh, it's it's all ta- It's done by taxes. The um, originally, <laughs> oh I God. guess it was a. Uh, a program for um, having a phone in everyone's home. It was supposed to be a nine one one thing, and yeah. then now, yeah. Oh, it's part of your phone bill, right? It's a tax on your phone bill, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You know, I remember hearing about that now. Well, I know that my landline bill. I'm one of the few people that still has a landline. I have it because I do a lot of interviews, and if the people can't do Mumble or Skype, uh, phones, landline phones have better audio than cell phones mostly. Uh, so I have that for that. But on my landline bill, there is something that's like, you know, a dollar a month or something for like tax. And it's, uh, you know, something for like universal phone distributorship or something like that. Something about everyone having a phone for 911. Yep. Do you have to do you have to rotate the dollar around, Michael? Yeah. <laughs> no, I have to have. I have to say, can you connect me to Murray Hill 4341? <laughs> And they're like one ringy dingy, two ringy dingy. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah, you guys don't even. You're too young to even know what that is, but it's still funny, huh? <laughs> no, well, wait, uh, they, not that. Uh, I guess I am pretty young. I'm only. I'm 28. That's the board what, operator, right? Yeah, but do you, I was referencing an actual TV show that used to have that as a running joke called Laughing. Oh, really? Yeah, it laugh in. Well, put it this way, laugh in. You know, made fun of current events, and they constantly made fun of Richard Nixon. So, if you know how long ago that was on, <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, no, wasn't even close to being born yet. So, Robert, what's new, man? Tell us something good. Uh, hopefully, I will be moving out of New England, actually, or well, uh, if I move to uh, New Hampshire, it would yeah. be better. But I'm, uh, I'm looking to go to West Virginia, Kentucky. So. Yeah, a lot of people be scared at that, like, West Virginia, that's all rednecks. And I'd be like, yeah. I mean, that's one of the places we looked at before we ended up in Wyoming, based on uh, gun ownership privileges from the king and uh, taxes and land prices. Yes, that's what I basically uh, looked at. I, th- I think it, some of the properties, it's like $500 for taxes, and mine's close to like 5000 here I got in Connecticut. Some, I got some news you can use, though, if you're moving to West Virginia. Check really carefully the mineral rights of any land you buy there because West Virginia is the one state where it's often difficult to impossible to find out who owns the mineral rights on your land there. And people have bought land outright in West Virginia, built their dream home, and five years later they wake up one morning to people putting an oil derrick in their front yard and it's legal. Ah, yeah, I'll I'll have to look into that. Hmm. Yeah. It's definitely- <laughs> yeah. That's probably the last thing I'd want to have is a wake up in the morning with a uh, a bulldozer. Yeah, <laughs> and it's it, and it's like all of the mineral rights there were sold like a hundred years ago, and it's often hard to even find out. Like there are lawyers and firms there that specialize in finding out who owns the the, the mineral rights on land. <laughs> yeah. And and it's not just oil too. Like somebody might own the oil, somebody might own the water, somebody else might own the natural natural gas. So and the coal. So there could be four people digging in your yard. <laughs> that's that's that, a good thing to know. Yeah, I actually saw that once uh, when I was looking at property with my fiance. That's that's the reason she's out there and I'm here in Connecticut. So she's she's got it pretty good so far. So <laughs> so what's the deal with gun ownership in Connecticut? If you're rich, you can own one. Uh, well, yeah, it depends on the town. Like, uh, Hartford, oh. the capital, it's, it's almost impossible. It depends on the town. Wyoming has a, uh, a state law where no town can write gun laws that are more restrictive than the state laws. I like that. Michael, yeah, I good. feel like you've been on both extremes of the gun ownership. Me? Yeah. You mean living in California and living in, uh, in Wyoming? Yeah. Yeah. 
Like, there is some middle ground. <laughs> yeah. California actually does not have the worst gun laws in the country. A lot of people say it does, but it doesn't. Um, the gun well, it laws, seems like it does. Yeah, they're pretty bad. But there's a, there's a lot of gun culture there, and there are public ranges, and there are clubs, and uh, they're the worst states than California for gun ownership are Hawaii, New Jersey, Illinois. Oh, Jersey sucks. Jersey's Illinois horrible. and D.C., yeah. Yeah, you yeah. can't even have like a box of twenty two rounds in on Yeah, your in person. Jersey in Jersey, some guy went to jail for like not breaking the law with a gun. Remember that? Uh, like, I'm not from, I don't know what you're talking about exactly, but Oh, some guy that was like moving from Colorado going to see his kid who was with his her his ex wife in New Jersey and uh got pulled over and searched and he had, you know, his gun locked in one case in the trunk and his ammo locked in another case in the trunk as required by state law. And they arrested him anyway and put him in prison. And he spent like two and a half years in there. And then finally the governor um, didn't fully pardon him, but let him out, like whatever, commuted his sentence. So it's like he got How out of prison. In? Like two and a half years, I think. And so he, oh got, my God. he got out of prison, but he still has a record and he can't That's own a hard. gun now. Yeah. New See, Jersey, we man. don't... In Maryland, we don't even have to keep it locked up. We just, like, our ammo can be in the glove compartment and our rifle in the trunk or vice in versa. Wi in Wyoming, it's the law that if you're over 12 years of age, you have to walk around open carrying a rifle. It's the law. <laughs> They'll arrest you for not doing that. That's I'm kidding, but be. it's pretty much how it is. <laughs> Yeah, bad. I used to live in Massachusetts, so that I kind of forgot. That's it, the other it's one. a little bit better, yeah. but. What's better? The uh, the gun laws in Connecticut, but it's not much better. Just actually, I think the the only difference is that you can have magazines over ten rounds. Really, yeah, oh, uh, must be nice. <sighs> really, you can't in Maryland. No, I think we might get away with a twenty round, but no thirty. I got some thirties right here, man. Yeah, well, that's nice. uh, the Freedom Fiends are over for the day. We thank you for calling in there, Robert. All right, thank call you. Call back anytime, and um, we will be back. With Nima Vidati, he's got his work release from the FEMA camp. Uh, we'll be back Wednesday. <laughs> Thanks, Garrett Fox, for coming on. Uh, it was a pleasure. It's so much fun. Worms. 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 This year, you can experience a taste of Libertopia. Libertopia is a voluntary community based on freedom and peace. Visit the three-day festival this October 11th to 14th at Humphreys Half Moon Inn on the San Diego Bay. With speakers, workshops, parties, and wonderful people, Libertopia has it all. Become a member of this peaceful voluntary community now. Visit Libertopia.org. Tickets and hotel rooms are going quickly, so make sure to reserve yours today. Find out more at Libertopia.org.